What's up guys, I'm Ira Rochelle and this is Nuggets of Truth. I was watching a video the other year of a guy mocking those of us who cling to the Trinity doctrine by arrogantly and smugly saying, Jesus couldn't even raise himself from the dead. So let's just get right into this, shall we? There are several different accounts of the resurrection. Let's first start with what others said about the resurrection of Jesus. Acts chapter four, verses eight through 10. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed? Let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9-10 through 10. For they themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you, how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. According to Peter, arguably Jesus' best friend, and Paul, arguably the greatest apostle who ever lived, God raised Jesus from the dead. Now let's take a look at whom Jesus said raised him from the dead. John chapter 2 verse 19 through 21. Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up again. The Jews then said, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. John 10, 17 through 18. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. According to Jesus, he raised himself from the dead. So what does this mean? Is there contradiction in scripture? Of course not. If there was, then that would mean that we can't trust the Bible and we might as well just throw it away. Therefore, there has to be an explanation. The only plausible explanation is that Jesus is God. If we continue a few verses down in the same chapter, Jesus makes the claim of being one with the Father. John 10, 22 through 30. At that time, the feast of dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. But you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. According to Jesus himself, no one can snatch us out of his hands because the Father is greater than all and he and the Father are one. Now some will say, but he said the Father is greater than all. He followed it with he and the Father are one. So then if the Father is greater than all and Jesus and the Father are one, then Jesus is also greater than all. Why didn't Jesus just come out and blatantly say that he was above everyone else? Look at what Jesus said as a response to the Jews when they condemned him and said that he was demon possessed because he said that he was greater than Abraham. John chapter eight, verse 54. Jesus answered, if I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father who glorifies me of whom you say he is our God. Jesus didn't go around glorifying himself. He didn't go around saying, look at me, look at me, look how much authority I have, look how much power I have, look how great I am. That wasn't Jesus. Jesus was pointing everyone back to the Father because he didn't bring glory to himself. The Father glorified him. The Spirit glorified him. Jesus didn't glorify himself. So when Jesus said, that the Father is greater than all, and He and the Father are one. He was saying that He is also greater than all because He's one with the Father. In order to be one with the Father, you would have to be at that equal level of the Father. 
Now, this sounds very familiar. Mark chapter 12, verse 28 through 30. And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, asked him, Which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus answered, The most important is here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Notice how the most important command starts. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Why does this matter? Because in this one sentence, God tells us that the Lord our God is one, which in the original Hebrew in Deuteronomy 6 verse 4 that Jesus was quoting says that the Lord our Elohim, the Lord is one. Elohim is the plural Hebrew word for gods. It's not singular. So in quoting this verse, Jesus emphasized the importance of believing in the Trinity doctrine because the Lord or Elohim is one. Not only is the Lord or Elohim one, but Jesus is declared to be the Lord of Lords in Revelation 17 verse 14 and Revelation 19 verse 16. If Jesus isn't God, then the statement would mean that Jesus, a man, is above God, which would be blasphemy. Philippians 2, 5 through 11 says, Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. Being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Paul plainly states that Jesus was not only in the form of God, but was equal with God, then emptied himself out in order to take on the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. Because Jesus emptied himself out and willingly took on the form of mankind in order to die on the cross and save us from our sin, the God had raised Jesus up from the dead and highly exalted him and gave him the name above every name so that we may all be saved through him because it's only at the name of Jesus that we are saved, Acts 4.12. Jesus, being a member of the Godhead, took part in raising himself from the dead. The entire Godhead rose Jesus from the dead. And this is important to understand because the Father who raised Jesus from the dead will also raise us from the dead in order that we might receive the spirit of adoption and be called sons and daughters of God, Ephesians 1, 3 through 6. It's important that the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives in us so that on that faithful day when Jesus returns, we might rise to him through the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead. Romans 8, 11. If Christ didn't take part in raising himself from the dead, then being made new in his image in the resurrection would be pointless. 1 Corinthians 15, 47 through 57. We are made in his image so that we might be made in the very image of God. 2 Corinthians 4, 4. And death no longer has any power over us, especially not the second death. Revelation 20, verse 6. Why you guys think about that? Let's sum everything up for you guys. The scripture states, God rose Jesus from the dead. While Jesus claims that he rose himself from the dead, both of these statements are true because Jesus is God. Jesus is one member of the Trinity. Jesus, the Father, and the Spirit rose Jesus from the dead so that one day when Jesus returns, we might meet him in the air and be transformed in the blink of an eye into the very image of God. I hope this cleared up any questions that you may have had about the resurrection of Jesus and who raised him from the dead and that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did enjoy this video, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.